Hello, this is Techedulu, and today we are going to have a look at the Logitech MX518 Legendary Edition. So this is a remake of a gaming mouse Logitech made in 2005. And today we are going to have a closer look at the mouse and we are going to look at the Logitech G-Hub software and how to control all the buttons of the mouse and of course I am going to give you my opinion of the mouse. So let's start with a closer look at it. So here we have the mouse. The first thing you'll see is that the surface of this mouse is quite uh, shiny so you can see me very well over here. <laughs> but yeah, let's start with this thing. So. This is a cable mouse and it is connected through a normal USB type A. The cable is not braided, it's just this uh, rubber cable and it's about two meters long. So that should be enough. But yeah, let's look at the mouse. So this is a mouse that has eight fully programmable buttons. We have of course the left and right click. We have the scroll wheel and Above and under the scroll wheel we have these two buttons. By default they are DPI up and down. And this is a multitasking button I think. And we have forward and backwards. The sensor here they call the Hero 16K. That is a 16,000 DPI sensor. And we also have two big glide pads here and one small over here. And you can also see the name here. So the surface of the mouse here is quite shiny and it's very slippery. If you get very sweaty hands, then you'll maybe not enjoy this mouse as much. But the surface on the sides here, which are the ones that you grip onto, has a nice textured finish. As you can see, it's a little bit shiny here, but that's because I've had this mouse for a while and used it uh, quite a lot. So, but it. It holds up really great and it isn't that soft, it's not rubber, it's a plastic surface, so it should not it should last a very long time. But other than that, the mouse doesn't have any lighting, so it's just an easy gaming mouse that just do its business really good. It's nothing fancy, it just it just works. So that's all it is to say about the uh, appearance of the mouse. Now let's take a look at the Logitech G-Hub software. Okay, so here we have the Logitech G-Hub and in the middle here we can see the MX518 mouse and if you have other Logitech G-Hub compatible devices they will show up here as well. Let's just start with clicking on the mouse. So the first thing we'll get is sensitivity options. So here we can set the DPI and as we can see by default it is set to 400, 800, 1600 and 3200. But we can change these four profiles to whatever we want. We can set them to some crazy numbers here all the way up. But if we don't like these settings we can press the restore default settings. So then we put all the DPI settings back to normal. So down here we can see the report rate or polling rate as other calls it. So here we can set how many times per second the mouse itself will report what it is doing each second. So we can set this down to all the way down to 125. I think this is only for older systems that don't support the 1000 Hz report rate here. But um, yeah, it's great to have the option to set it down if you are in a situation if you are in a situation that you need to put it down. And the next option here is assignments. So not the homework style, it's what you can do with the mouse. So here we can assign many things to the different buttons on this mouse. So here we can set commands like open narrator or magnifier. We can just Click on this and pull it over to a button. We will replace the forward option for this to open magnifier and then we can click this button to open, well, Windows magnifier. Or if we want to go back from it, we can use, click use default. So it will revert back to forward. We can also set uh, the buttons to the different keystrokes if you want that. 
every number or any button on the on the keyboard. We can set different actions, open different programs, and we can also set macros. Uh, but we will not uh, get into that. You can uh, create all of that stuff yourself. And then we have the system. Here we can see all the different things that you can do from example assigning a button to do copy and paste if you do a lot of that uh, it's really great to have that option we also have yeah, the normal mouse clicks and double click even media buttons audio and lighting but we don't have any lighting on this mouse so <laughs> it, it doesn't do much on this mouse i guess um, and we also have down here we can see default and also have G-Shift. So G-Shift is a quick profile switching which you can assign to a key on your keyboard, for example, that we can set to, we can, uh, for example, set copy and paste here instead of forward and backwards. And then we can, yeah, we can switch between these two really fast. And if you need to copy and paste things and then go back to have it forward and backwards. Or you can do whatever else you like if you want commands or in one profile and yeah, some other system settings on another profile, you can switch between those here. So yeah, that's how to reassign the buttons. And up in the corner here, we have MX518 settings. So here we can see we can turn on the onboard memory mode. If we click on this, we get a message here. This device is onboard mode. Um, so we can save up to five slots here of profiles, which are saved on the mouse itself. So you can have the same profiles if you are switching between your desktop and your laptop, or if you connect it to your tablet or yeah, whatever the other device you have, you can also always have the same settings with you. Or different settings if you like that and we can of course turn this off it's great to have the onboard memory mode if you have any problems with the software running on your computer it, it shouldn't use uh, any uh, that much resources but I had heard of other gaming softwares that make some problems in some games that they can't use the software itself but they have to use it to control the mouse so it's really great to have the onboard memory to create the profiles and settings that you like to have on your mouse and then close the software so it, must, so it is not running in the background. Okay, so that's a quick look at the software here. We have this, this button over here, but that's the settings for the app and uh, yeah, some other settings, but that, uh, that isn't related to the mouse, so we just skip over that. So yeah, then it's time to go back to the studio and I will give you my thoughts about this mouse. Okay, so that was the software. And now back to the mouse. Well, I had the original MX518 some years after it came out in the early 2000s and I really loved that mouse back then. So, and back then my, I was younger and uh, I didn't have such large hands as I have now. So that's uh, one thing for me that this mouse feels quite small in my hands. And if you are one of those who use the palm grip and have large hands, you can see that my fingers sticks over the edge here. And, sorry, <laughs> and you can see can press the button over here and if you have large fingers well your fingers will stick past where the, you can actually click on the mouse yes you can hold longer back but it's I think it's uh, created for some smaller hands or if you are a, a claw holder um, it works really good it's a quite light mouse and that's uh, quite a, the, the thing that I like with the mouse I'm using now. It's wireless but it is also heavier and I like more of the heavier style. But yeah, when this mouse came out, I think it was in 2019, I heard the news and it was actually a perfect, uh, perfect timing for me because the wired mouse that I used back then, it died 
just completely died. It was a wireless mouse and it was no saving it and it was out of warranty. So I had to figure out what I was going to use next. So I heard that the Legend Edition came out of the MX518 and I just bought it right away. I, I used it for two years between, before I switched to the mouse I use now. And I switched mainly because it feels a little bit too small for my hands. After longer periods, I, I can feel it in my two fingers there that controls this side. I think it's just a little bit too narrow for me. But you, if you have a more normal sized hands, it should be perfect for you. And most gaming mouse now, mice now have a braided cable or are wireless, of course. And this still uses the old style rubber cable. But for this kind of mouse, I think that's great because the cable is very light and you don't feel it at all when you're moving it around. Um, and they say it should be more durable than the original one, but um, so uh, <laughs> yeah, it has hold up uh, with the two years of uh, use, so and it still looks like new, so I guess they're telling the truth. <laughs> And also when the mouse came out, it used, um, it got a lot of praise for the sensor that it used, the Hero 16K, that they call it. I never used that high DPI on my mouse, mice, so I don't need the 16,000 DPI. But what's great with it having such a high DPI is that when you have it on the lower DPI settings, it is still really sensitive. Well, all the movements feel correct when you move the mouse. The, the uh, pointer on the mouse just goes exactly where you point this. It doesn't jump around, it doesn't vibrate on the surface or anything. And I've tried this on different surfaces, on a wooden table, on a hard mouse mat surface, and also the soft style. And it had worked great on all of them. And also the glide pads are really good on, have been really good on all surfaces. And uh, yeah, of course the buttons. So these are one of the loudest ones I've heard in a while. Um, just have a listen. So I've used many types of mice uh, over the years and these are, <laughs> these are one of the louder ones. But uh, if you're just using it to game in your uh, game in your room, then you, you wouldn't care about it at all. But if you are planning to use this in an office environment, you should maybe consider another mouse. It could be annoying for other people. But all, but all the other buttons doesn't make that uh, much noise. And also the scroll wheel. So the scroll wheel is really nice. Uh, if you click the scroll wheel, it uses almost this. Uh, it creates almost the same sound as the other buttons. So it's quite loud, but the scrolling is it's quite quiet. <laughs> and the build quality of this mouse feels really great. If I take one corner and try to twist it, it doesn't make any sound. And it feels really sturdy and all the buttons and everything feels really good. So I think the build quality on this is really high for the price that it costs. And that is really great. So yeah, that's all I have to say about this mouse, I think. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. We would love to have you in our techie family. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.